So here we are, we're a few days away from the start of the 2022-23 Premier League season. And in this video, I'm going to run through my full predictions for the full table, right from 20th the whole way through to who I think will win the Premier League. Of course, we're going to be speaking about Manchester United inside that. But lots of you have been asking me to do a video looking at my full predictions. So I'm going to run through every single team, take a look at the transfers they've made, what happened last season and the expectations I've got on them this season. Uh, lots of work went into this video, so if you would, please, please drop a like on the video. So many of you seem to watch it and don't like the video. <laughs> a lot of work does go in, so please, if you would, I'll ask one more time, drop a like on the video. But look, let's run through this table. And of course, let's have a quick rewind to last year and the positions that everybody finished in. We know that. But just keep an eye on those. Uh, you'll remember those. Of course you will. I don't really want to remember last season. Well, let's be honest. I don't think any United fan wants to remember last season. But in terms of who I think is going to finish 20th, for me... I think it's pretty damn obvious. And I don't mean to be offensive to Bournemouth, right? Sorry about that. Just pull that up on the bottom there. But Bournemouth, I don't think I've really got any chance this year in the Premier League. If you look at the signings they've made, been reduced to making a couple of... Wow, I mean, Joe Rothwell, Ryan Fred, they're not exactly game-changing signings, are they? Scott Parker, he's not, he's, got the, he's not got the best reputation, decent enough in the Championship. Not inside the Premier League. I would absolutely expect Bournemouth to be bottom of the league come the end of the season. And I think there's going to be another promotion team just above them in the league. I'm going for Fulham down there to be second bottom. Silver, again, if you're looking at a manager who don't have sort of Premier League pedigree, if you want to call it that, I'd absolutely put him in that category. Now, they've been slightly better in the window. Andreas Pereira, he's going to make all the difference to Fulham this year. Uh, look, Solomon's going to come in. He'll, I'm sure some of them, Kevin and Barbie, will do some sort of job. But they just, they're not enough. I don't think they're enough to keep a team that just got promoted to then compete in the Premier League against what, all, everything that's going on around him. So I personally think those two are pretty damn settled as the bottom two this year, Fulham and Bournemouth. Now, 18th position, I think there's quite a few teams you can put there. I'm going for Southampton this year. I quite like Ralph Hassan, who was a manager. I think he's decent enough. But I think if we take a look at what they've made, like Gavin Bazuna, they got from uh, City as a goalkeeper. Joe Rebo, they've, got, they've made some decent signs. And I think he's a good manager. And I'll be honest, this one isn't anywhere near set in stone. I think there's two or three teams that you can put into this one. I think it'll probably be a fight towards the end. But for a bottom three, I've gone for Southampton, Fulham and Bournemouth. And just above them, I'm definitely putting Everton, who I think would again struggle this year under Frank Lampard. Don't really rate Frank Lampard that much. They haven't exactly made the signings that they need to make. And they were, wow, of course, Frank Lampard came in halfway through the season. Ultimately, it worked out for them just towards the end. I'm not expecting much from Everton this year. And because I think... The, the, the level of competition in the Premier League just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up. And I think it will go up around them. And I just don't think by comparison of the rivals around them that they've done enough really to secure that. I mean, they will survive, but I think it will just be on the edge again. Just above Everton, I've gone for Leeds in 16th. Uh, again, last year was, well, it was a relegation scrap the whole season for them, wasn't it? Well, not maybe not the whole season, but it certainly got into one. In terms of who they signed this year, they've been a little bit busy. Rasmus, Grins Rasmus Christensen. And Brendan Aronson, both from Salzburg. And Tyler Adams from Leipzig is almost like Jesse Marsh is their manager. And that's what he knows. I, I think maybe I'm being slightly harsh here on Leeds. Maybe they'll probably do a little bit better than that. But I'm putting them down as 16th. And in 15th, again, maybe I'm being slightly harsh here. But I've actually gone for Brentford. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. You might, again, you might, you might be fair enough to say, Sam, be a bit harsh on Brentford here. Because I do like Thomas Frank. I do like what they've done. And me, will he make a difference? Maybe he will. I'd like to see how... I, I like how Brentford play football. But I th again, if I'm looking at the teams around them, I think other teams are strengthened in better ways compared to Brentford. So I've gone for Brentford down there in 15th. And in 14th, that's where I think we'll see Nottingham Forest. Now, we know exactly what uh, Steve Cooper's done this summer. He's gone absolutely balmy in the transfer window. They have made... Countless signings. You can all just not fit it on one page. I mean, they made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've sold those more than ten. Jesse Lingard coming in on a free. That's I won't say it's controversial, but 
Nottingham Forest have tried to do, was it QPR who came up that year, spent an absolute bucket load of money and then got relegated and had this huge wage bill that they had to then fork out for. Maybe Nottingham Forest have protected themselves a little bit better than that with contracts, but I think compared to what they've spent, compared to what the, these teams have been spending around them and the quality of them, I think Nottingham Forest will have enough to comfortably survive this year. That's what I think so anyway. Now, this is probably, might be slightly controversial, but I think this might be the year where Leicester really have a drop off. Leicester have been, well, they've been a Premier League mainstay for a long time. Of course, they did. Won the, won the fucking thing a few years ago. But unless this is wrong, they haven't made any signings. And if I'm looking at Schmeichel leaving, I think this year might be the year where Jamie Vardy drops off from that player who's just ridiculous and consistent. I don't know. I just personally think that we should expect a drop off from Leicester this year. And I'm putting them down in 13th. Again, that might be wildly wrong. But hell, that's what predictions are all about, right? And in terms of who's going to finish 12th, I'm putting Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa just above Leicester in 12th. Uh, I think they've made some decent signings. I think Steven Gerrard, you know, it might hurt, begrudge to say, but he's a good manager. But what he did at Rangers was good. I think what he did at Aston Villa last year when he came in was decent. Had a full preseason under his belt. I think Aston Villa will do okay. I'm going to back them for a mid-table finish. So I'm going to go for Aston Villa to finish there in 12th. Who have I got in, in 11th? Oh, that's interesting. Well, I don't know why I'm saying interesting to my bloody preview that I've written down there. But I've gone for 11th for Brighton. Now, I quite like Graham Pot Potter. And I think that seems like a fair estimation. They're, Brighton are a good team. They finished ninth, I believe, last year. Let's have a quick look at the Premier League table last year. Yet they finished ninth just below Leicester. So I've, back, I've, I've actually gone Leicester to drop five places down into 13th. But I think, I quite, as I say, I quite like Brighton. I quite like Graham Potter. Will Cucurella leaving and joining Chelsea, will that cause a significant difference to them? I mean, they seem to cope quite well when they sold Ben White to Arsenal the year before. So I suppose in the same sense, it will be similar to that. But I'm expecting them to drop off a little bit. That's why I'm putting them down as 11th. Now in 10th, I've already got it there. Wolves. Wolves this summer have managed to kind of hold on to everyone really, haven't they? Well, everyone that they wanted to. Um, Neves is still there. Jimenez is still there. I think Moutinho signed a one-year contract extension. I liked the way that I like the way that Wolves play football. If we're, if we're looking at where Wolves finished last year, they finished tenth. I'm backing them to have a very very similar season. There might be a drop off from Wolves. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But who have we got into the top ten? Right, this is where we have the conversation. It really starts to get a little bit exciting. I think so. Not about exciting is the wrong word. It's a bit unfair to the relegation scrap and to anybody in the bottom half of the table, but that's what I've gone for, all right? In terms of ninth, I've gone for Eddie Howe's Newcastle. Now, Newcastle, of course, are effectively trying to become the new man city, aren't they? This summer, they brought in Nick Pope, Matt Target, Sven Botman. It's not exactly mind-blowing. At the moment, they're looking at James Madison for 50 million. I thought Eddie Howe did a pretty damn good job last year at Newcastle. With the signings that they made, the rush signings in January, and the way he gelled them all in, I absolutely think They'll be fine. I've got men. Of course, they'll be fine. But I'm backing them to get top half finished. I'm backing Newcastle to get ninth. I don't think it'll. Be, if they do finish any higher than that, it won't be that much higher than that. It's definitely a long process they're going on. I think Eddie Howe was a smart appointment fight by them. But I'm going for Newcastle for ninth. And in eighth, I'm going for Crystal Palace. I really like what Patrick Vieira has done at Crystal Palace. I like the signings he's made in the in the couple of years he's been there. I think they've made some mix. I think Cech Di Cure is going to be a really good signing. Obviously, they got Malcolm Eboi ahead of Manchester United. I like the way that Patrick Vieira has got Crystal Palace playing a different style of football to what you've saw. We all got accustomed to under Roy Hodgson, uh, and I think they're going to. I think they'll be finishing top half of the table. I've backed them for eighth. You can let me know what you think about that in seventh. I'm leaving West Ham right there. I'm pretty sure that's where West Ham finished last season as well. Obviously, West Ham, they've got Skamaka, which is a massive signing. It really, really is for, for West Ham. If you take a look at else, they've got Alfonso Ariola on a permanent deal, Patrick Kelly, and a couple of other smaller signings. But Gianluca Skamaka is, I mean, West Ham have got a history signing a lot of strikers that just don't work out. But you would back him to be a very decent striker. Moyes is... Fair play to Moyes. He's, he's turned his career around and he's made West Ham very, very consistent. Even inside the going with the Europa League run they had last year, they still finished seventh. I think they'll be fine inside that position. And then we get to the top six, which maybe a lot of you have been waiting for in this video, considering I'm a United fan, you're United fans. 
This is what I think the top six will be this year. And in sixth position, I think we're going to see Chelsea. Right? Now, hear me out before you start going mad at me in the comments. Chelsea, let's have a look at their summer so far. We know exactly what their summer so far has gone like. Basically, being Barcelona have signed everybody they wanted to sign. Raheem Sterling, fantastic signing. Khalidou Koulibaly, it seems like a good Chelsea signing. It's a very Chelsea signing. But they've, they've missed out on what Rafinha. They missed out on... Um, who was the other player that wanted to go? I don't know. They've missed out on like two or three players that they really, really wanted. I thought it was a bit of a mistake to Boli coming in and basically sacking everybody and just taking charge of the transfers. I feel like this is a year where it might sort of, there might be a little bit of a drop-off from Chelsea. That's what I'm guessing so anyway. And I, I hope so as well because I really don't like Chelsea. But I think Chelsea are going to finish down there in sixth. Let me go a little bit more zoomed in now because we can just focus on this top six. But I've gone Chelsea for sixth. Now in fifth, right now, I think this is where United will finish next season. I don't need to pull up the transfers. I'll do it anyway. You know exactly who we've signed. Matasia, uh, Ericsson, and Martinez. As it stands, I don't know. I, I, I know that we're going to be so much better next season than we were this last season. It's a given. We won't be a joke of a football club anymore. But I just feel, given everything that everybody's done around us, given the weaknesses that we still have inside our squad, I just feel that, that we, we will just not have enough. I think we'll fall just shy of that top four. So I think the Europa League will probably be important for Manchester United next season. But as it stands, and this could, of course, change in the next few weeks. I want to get this prediction done before the season starts. But if we make the right signings in the next couple of weeks, maybe that changes. But as it stands, I've gone for United to finish fifth. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. In fourth, who have I gone for? I've gone for Arsenal. I think Arsenal have done pretty well this summer, I've got to say. Uh, I think the signings that they've made, I think Gabriel Jesus is a smart Premier League proven signing. Then they, they, they've made Premier League proven signings. And of course, they've got Fabio Vieira as a bit of an unknown entity. But uh, Arteta has been on a path, been lots of speed bumps. Uh, it, it feels like they're heading in the right direction. It feels like they're all pulling in the same direction as well. I, think, I don't know, maybe I'm going to be completely wrong here and it's just Arsenal, we're just going to Arsenal. But I feel like this might be a year where they actually take a bit of a step up. And that's why I'm backing them for fourth. Uh, and I'm going to back Spurs for third as well. I think if you're looking at how much they've backed Conte, they really, I mean, I don't know how many signs they've actually made now. Let me pull this up. Interesting to pull this up. We've got Perisic, Forster, Basuma, Richarlison, Clement Lengley, Jed, Jed Spence as well. They really have backed Conte. Uh, and I think Spurs, I'm going to go Spurs to finish third. And the top two, not that it really matters, I'll be completely honest, but I think City will win the Premier League again. I mean, Liverpool have got Darwin Nunez in. Of course, that's an improvement. But City are just... City are re ruthless and relentless and just... They're just too good. They really are just too good. And you might... I want Haaland to fail. I want Nunez to fail. Neither of them will fail. They'll both be very good signings. And both of those teams would again this season be on a level above everybody else. Man United, Spurs, Arsenal and Chelsea will just be scrapping for those third and fourth positions. We won't be, I don't think, chasing one top two spots by the end of the season unless we get a significant drop-off and I just don't think that's going to happen. But that's my full Premier League predictions. Let's run through this. I think City, Liverpool, uh, Spurs and Arsenal will get the top four positions with the United just missing out on it and hopefully we can get the Europa League. Really hope so. Um, and I don't think that's been massively pessimistic. I think it's been realistic of our current squad strength. The fact that we will be a better team than last year. But ultimately, I think we'll fall just a little bit short unless we bring new signings in. And Chelsea, I think there'll be a drop-off from them. And the rest of the Premier League table, well, it is what it is. I back Crystal Palace to make a good improvement. And I think Leicester will really drop off in the three relegated teams. I've gone for Southampton, Fulham and Bournemouth. Now, you can let me know what you think about my predictions in the comments below, as you always will, no doubt. And no doubt at the end of the season, I'll react to these and realise I got about two of them correct. Hopefully not United in fifth. Hopefully United finish fourth or third. I'm not fussy. But look, you let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Please, if you would, ladies and gentlemen, drop a like on the video. It does really help the channel. Uh, and later in this week, I'm going to have my full Manchester United season preview. Looking at Premier League, Europa League, FA Cup, League Cup, top scorer, top assists, player of season, all of that. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you on Thursday. Well, I'll see you tomorrow for another video. But let me know your Premier League predictions in the comments below. But that's my one right there. You can let me know what you think about that.